Howdy folks, I'm Tahoe Wrangler, and today we're going to be talking transmissions, and I'm going to kind of do the comparison, automatic versus manual shift, and at the end of this video, I'll tell you if I'm happy, or if I had to do it all over again, if I would still stick with a manual shift in my Jeep build here. Let's get started. Now we'll get started talking about the automatic transmission. Now if you're not mechanically inclined, there's a great tutorial video on the interwebs called the Turbo Encabulator that will explain your emulated Fabulites and all the magic that work makes an automatic transmission work. Put a link in the description to one of those. It's a, it's a good educational uh, video watch and quite humorous. The original machine had a base plate of pre-famulated amulite surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing in such a way that the two spurving bearings were in a direct line with a panometric fam. Now there are almost an infinite number of combinations of engine transmission combinations, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna stick to the ones that are regulated or you know more uh, familiar to the Jeep. So I wanna draw that comparison. Now, what would you would find in a JK, the automatic transmission that was very popular in the JK is the five-speed automatic transmission. Uh, that's a little bit newer than the 4L60E that's inside this. This is a four-speed automatic transmission in this thing. And this one kind of gets a bad rap, but this is, Paired behind a low horsepower, you know, 5.7 liter V8, it does pretty good. It's once you start bumping up horsepower or adding big tires, <clears throat> like some people I know are tend tend to do, uh, that's when you can cause problems on this thing. But I've been really fortunate so far. This one is running great. Now here's my take on the JK with the 3.6 Pentastar engine. Not a fan. <laughs> now, and that's only because that transmission. Uh, accentuates the flaws, the low, the, sh the small amount of torque that that engine makes at the higher RPMs, uh, a broader gear set, sp you know, spread on across the gears. That just, I, I don't like that. I don't think, you know, and driving that it, is what led me to want desiring a uh, manual when I was shopping for a JK. Now, that 545 RFE in my Ram truck, oh, good old Ram Johnson, uh, with that little 5.7 Hemi was fantastic. I thought that because that engine made a ton of power across, I think that's a, actually an under unsung engine. That, that Gen 3 Hemi is a really, really good engine. Uh, I got to know a lot about it by swapping that engine into that vehicle and really loving it. And with that much power, the 545, the five-speed automa automatic in that truck was fantastic. I never, ever wanted more from that. It was durable, beat the crowd out of it, was very sporty off-road and on the highway. So it actually did great. So it wasn't that the transmission is poor. I just believe that the 3.6 in this platform, in the JK platform, with that transmission, uh, kind of just shows off all of its uh, low spots or weak spots. So personally, not a big fan of that. But now in the modern area, in the JLs and the JTs, the Jeeps have the ZF8 transmission, and that is a phenomenal unit. Now the technology is such that a tight close ratio eight speed actually makes the 3.6 and they actually change the tune on the engine as well. So the, the engine just feels a little bit more responsive and then you have all eight speeds in that new transmission. It's phenomenal. The JLs that I've driven in the JT uh, feel great. I think that that transmission works super well with that engine. And now they're actually putting a bunch more engines in, in the mix, but I think that that works. Now, personally, I don't mean to bag on the 3.6 Pentastar engine in my JK, but I, I just don't, I don't like it in this platform. I've never liked it. It's fine and that's it. I can't say anything great about it. The, there's no low end power and in a manual transmission, I like that. I don't want to have to rev the crap out of it. I don't, I'm not a Toyota guy and, and you know, I'm okay with bouncing off the rev limiter all the time. That engine doesn't actually even like to be up there doing that, the 3.6. It just makes this kind of peaky bit of 
horsepower up there. And if you let it lug, it just kind of, you know, dogs on you. Whoa. <laughs> And that was just one of the inspirations for me going for the manual in the JK because I had driven that and was like, ugh, and thought that the manual gives you that more driver's driver feel, that one-to-one -one connection with the engine and the drivetrain, but there are some drawbacks to that as well. Perfect. Hard passenger. Yeah, go back just a little bit more and you'll be able to. There it is. One of the biggest drawbacks to having a manual in the rock crawler off-road world and why they're such an outlier in that, uh, in the trophy truck, desert racing, rock crawling world, is the fact that with the manual transmission, as soon as you release the clutch, the engine, drivetrain are all now one unit and spinning. And what that does is it tra transfers any driveline shock right to all of those components. There's no forgiveness in that. When you have an automatic transmission, you have a torque converter. Now the torque converter in the automatic transmission is a fluid, is, is a, <laughs> watch the turbo encabulator video. There's a fluid filled with a bunch of veins. Those actually have a little bit of forgiveness or give. And so if you're like jumping and your wheels are spinning and your re engine's revving and you hit the ground hard or you hit a rock and you rev, you have that forgiveness in the drive line. So it's really uh, easy. It's much easier on the drive shafts, components, axles, things like that. Whereas in a manual, all that stuff's connected. So all of that drive line shock is induced and transferred into some of the more fragile components. So that being a drawback, that's one of the main reasons why you don't see full manuals in that world. There are a few trophy trucks that actually had been experimenting with sequential manual transmissions with a torque converter like an automatic. So they're trying to find the best of both worlds. Now, to give you an example, uh, the manual is a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, let's say fluid-wise even. Uh, the manual transmission in this JK takes 1.6 uh, quarts of fluid, so not much fluid in there. And transmission in the JK, the 545, takes almost seven, six and a half, almost seven in there. So just to give you that, just there's much more fluid in, you know, weight in fluid. And that brings me to one of the main detriments or downsides of having the automatic transmission. It's the fact that that fluid and that forgiveness of the fluid running through all of the systems in the transmission, you have valve bodies, you have planetary gears, you have all of this fluid needing to make all of that work, you incur heat. So if you picture it this way, an automatic transmission is basically trying to cook itself to death at all times, that's just normal function. So you need to figure out a way to have that fluid get outside that transmission and into a cooler out in the front here. So you always have to have external cooling on an automatic transmission to help it survive. So maybe you've experienced a version of that out on the trail with your automatic Jeep and you'll get that, you know, you're just kind of creeping along with your buddies and then you'll get that warning on the dash, the temperature warning. and many times in at least the JK models, that's actually your transmission temperature, fluid temperature level uh, warning that it's too high. So even with the plumbing into the cooler, into the front here is not enough. Go to B&M or go to one of those aftermarket and get another external transmission cooler. That's the tip here is to do that. That's just one of those things that will help um, make your transmission last longer and keep those temperatures down. 
So there's a little tip there to help keep you cool because the automatic transmission with all of those benefits, that's its one major thing you have to accommodate is heat. It wants to just build heat all the time because everything's, all that fluid's pumping through there doing its work. It needs to go outside the transmission to get cooled to go back in and do work. I thought I'd bring Pinto out front to help with this demonstration. Now, one of the other reasons, and this is a, something that I learned the last, over the last few years hanging out with some of the Ultra 4 guys, is that if you listen to some of the race footage or, or some, watch some of the footage and you hear that squealing, that high-pitched squealing, uh, when they go through some of the really gnarly obstacles, that's because many of the drivers are driving with their foot on the brake, like hard. Like they will go through an entire set of pads in one race, in one session, because that's what the automatic transmission allows for. You could push your foot on the brake, keep any errant wheel speed down, and then that way you could be continually driving through. And what some of them do to use that technique is to keep the suspension kind of bound up. And then when you hit something kind of gnarly, you could let off the brake really fast, keep your foot on the gas, and it will literally unload and help you get over things. But it's a very fascinating thing that you can't do with a manual at least not as effectively. You can absolutely drag your brake while you're out, but you can't come to a stop, or if you do hit something, you have to get your foot over to the clutch to disengage, and that's where that automatic. But again, lots of heat build up when you do that, but it's a really, really powerful tool when you're doing that technical rock crawling stuff. And I, I actually used that technique in the Tahoe here, because I don't have a locker or a pause attraction in the front here, and here's an example of me climbing this little dirt hill with just my foot on the gas and you can hear the front end bouncing because the wheels are just spinning and out of control so they so I'm not controlling that And then this is an example of me dragging the brake and driving through it by hitting the gas. And what that will do is it controls, especially in an open front diff vehicle like this, any errant wheel speed. So all one wheel has to do is get a little bit of slip and it just starts going by dragging the brake. I can keep that under control and you won't hear that clink, clink, click, clink, clink, clink of the suspension as this wheel gets traction then loses traction and gets traction. So it keeps that under control. The vehicle will, settle in and climb a little bit better. So having the automatic for technical stuff, that is the main reason of why it's so desirable is having that ability to feather the brake, drive through it, control the wheel speed and the suspension. So let me know in the comments if you guys knew about that trick that the Ultra 4 guys actually do. And some of the trophy truck guys, same thing. When things get technical, they'll drag that brake, drive through it. And it's, a, it's an absolute great tip for technical driving to, get, to keep things under control. So given all that, the $25 question is obviously, would I have gone this route again? Am I glad that I have the manual in my Jeep right now? And the answer is yes. For the predominant amount of rock crawling that I do, the manual has proven to be extremely reliable, fun to drive. The only time it's a little bit of a bummer is like, uh, I would say the time that I ran Pritchett Canyon, it, it was hard. It was, it added some difficult factor to that. And sometimes here in LA, bumper to bumper traffic is a little tedious, but it's got a hydraulic clutch. So it's not like it's a heavy pedal to push. So no, I would say the benefit for, for me is that I still do like it. And I'm still considering maybe a power adder on this thing, like a supercharger or something, or a turbo or something like that to help give it a little bit of that low end grunt and what I'm missing. 
in this or the, what I would think to, that would make this. Obviously a V8 swap is the ideal thing. I think a 5.7 in this thing would be perfect, but I live in California. That's an extraordinarily difficult uh, and expensive kit to do uh, for like three grand. I could get a, a supercharger kit or a pro charger kit for this thing. Um, that is the more uh, appealing thing to me. And I like the fact that it doesn't overheat and I, I like all of those things about it. So would I do this again? Yeah, I am happy with my stick shift man pedal Jeep. Some of you will remember when I put one tons under my buddy Joe's Jeep, he's actually considering a really unique swap. He is going to put a ZF eight speed in his, in that JK. And I think that's a really fascinating thing to do. Instead of incurring the smog and all of the things of trying to put a V8 in your Jeep here in California, he's just going to swap the ZF, take the 45, the 545, uh, automatic out of there, put the ZF eight speed in, which is a, what I feel a good mate, a good match to the 3.6 liter engine. And I'm really interested to see, to watch him and to see him pull this off and drive that. That would be a really fun feature for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like I say, stick around. I'm going to take you out and show you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years on how to make any stick shift, manual shift transmission last longer, get the most out of it, and we'll go off-roading and I'll show you some of the techniques I've picked up over the years. So thank you again for watching, and until next time, enjoy your drive.